right, hello, my name is Eric Waymeyer. I'm with Manufacturing Asset Solutions, and I'm going to be doing a 30,000 foot overview of our one of our solutions, uh, our computerized maintenance management software, Express Maintenance. And if you want to find out more about Express Maintenance, uh, feel free to go to www or https forward slash forward slash mass.systems forward slash em dash home, or you can call us at 831 2750. 692. You can email us at support at mass.systems or sales at mass.systems or you can go to this website and uh, request information uh, or, and request a demo. Uh, so let's take a look at express maintenance. Again, this is going to be a 30,000 foot overview so we're not going to go into the setup and all the ways that the, 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 the software is interconnected with other pieces of the software. Where we're going to start is uh, I'm going to take you to the administration tab and this is where we're going to skip most of what, we're, what we could discuss as far as the configuration and setting up your PM program and how to enter employees and the security uh, levels that are involved within setting up employees, how to map out your facilities, whether you have one building that's, uh, or you have multiple buildings that are close or across the country or across the world, you can set up all of your sites and locations in the same database and uh, then separate them. Um, so that's as far as in the detail as I want to get there. One of the main reasons that people purchase or are looking for computerized maintenance management software is really what they're trying to do is start to organize the chaos, uh, whether it's uh, planned maintenance or demand maintenance, uh, whether it's those demand work orders or your PM program, or if you're uh, sophisticated and using predictive services, they need a way to be able to enter all of that data into a software and that software then tell them what their schedule should look like. And that's what Express Maintenance does. Uh, it also does inventory control. Uh, it has a purchasing module, a receiving module, uh, in order to maintain that part's inventory. And so the, the three major pieces to a CMMS are your equipment, your parts, and your PMs. And then there's also the request module. Uh, so that you can submit work requests or production or office staff can submit work requests. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is your equipment. Notice you have your, uh, this is your equipment list and I can zoom into any one of these pieces of equipment to see that equipment detail. We have the, uh, the equipment detail header screen right here with a photo of the equipment. We also have 21 unique user defined fields so that in case any information isn't up here that you want to be able to gather, you can collect it down here in the user defined fields, lease and warranty information, device information, which includes things like um, your connector information, amps, voltage, phases, those kind of things, calibrations, uh, attachments, uh, whether it's uh, another piece of equipment or it's a actual document. You can attach documents here, CAD drawings, those kinds of things. If it's a vehicle, uh, you can identify specific vehicle information in here and connect that to third-party information. Uh, if you have an OBD2 device in your vehicle, then it can relay mileage and fault codes into express maintenance. Uh, we have a note section, sources, and then services. And this is where you're building your PM program, is really you're attaching the PMs to the equipment, uh, giving it a schedule date, and that's what uh, kicks off the algorithm that's going to start producing those work orders for you. Uh, you also can build your list of materials here. So we have our parts for this piece of equipment, this uh, equipment's downtime history, and uh, any counts, any history of counts that have been counted on this piece of equipment. <clears throat> so that's just taking a look at the equipment. And so once you have all of your equipment in the system, then you can enter all of your parts into the system. And here's your parts list. Again, click on any one of those parts to see the detail. And uh, just like on the equipment screen, we have a header section where you have your parts information and you can attach a picture of the part as well. Current cost, uh, we also have 21 unique user defined fields is here as well. You can attach attachments. You can also identify your sources. So if you have a primary vendor that is a source for this part, you can also attach more than one vendor and that include their price so that if uh, one vendor doesn't have it and you need it, you can always go to that other, that other vendor. Uh, see what equipment this part is used on. Uh, you can see your receiving history and your usage history. And that's the parts section. Now, after you have your units and the services assigned, you also have your parts assigned, and then you mash all that together into the, the PM program. 
and the demand work order program. So in express maintenance, all of your work orders end up on the same screen. So we have um, our work order tab, and then we have requests, service overview, our work order overview, and then our work order data or our work order detail. So follow the thought pattern here. Request, this is a demand request. So the, these requests are coming from outside of the express maintenance system. Uh, we have another sister software that uh, you purchase along with express maintenance. And what that does is it allows office staff and or production staff to be able to submit a request without having to enter the express maintenance software itself. And if we click on the request, we can see an incoming request here. From here, all I got to do is select it, assign a work order, and then I get to schedule that uh, using our scheduler and the scheduler provides me the ability to pick a specific schedule date and time what category we want to assign that particular uh, work order is it planned or demand what group and that just further breaks down your planned and demand codes what classification uh, we use this to help with planning and scheduling does it need review do we need to order parts is it waiting on parts is it ready to schedule is it scheduled or does this particular work order, is it going to need to be scheduled with, with production? Uh, that's up for the planner scheduler to decide. Uh, it's priority, the requester, and then uh, what work group we want to assign to this and what technician. That gets converted to a work order and then it will show up on your work order overview. Now before I go there, I want to go over here to the services overview. And all the service overview does is show you based on the equipment that you added, the PMs that you assign to the equipment, which PMs are due, which PMs are overdue, and which ones need to be scheduled into work orders. And uh, here in our next release, actually, we have added a way to automate the services and converting those automatically into work orders. So they just show up on the work order overview and uh, pre assigned to employees if you want to. Uh, so uh, this is what this list here just shows us what services have come due. Again, I can pick these and then convert those to a work order, uh, and I get the same scheduler that pops up. So then once that service has been converted to a work order, I'll find it on my work order overview. Here I can see my open, my completed, my created, or both, or all of them. Uh, I am looking at all of my work orders based on my, uh, my date criteria, the, the search that I have here. Uh, I can also filter by company, site, location, source, group, the unit name, the unit number, the technician, the work group, the category, class, and priority. So if I want to see all of my current work orders that are assigned, uh, that are demand, I can hit search. And here's all of my demand work orders. So these are all my um, reactive work orders and then from any one of these I can double click on that to see the actual work order detail and now it takes me over here to the work order data tab so what is really nice about express maintenance is all work orders are done from the same screen and that's planned and demand so everything's done on a work order that's planned and demand and then that way all of your service history is um, easily entered onto one screen and it's, it's easier to get that, uh, that good quality data that is timely, actionable, and intelligent. That way you're able to make some biz better business decisions. So here on the work order, uh, we have the work order number, we have the unit, the unit number, its site and location, it, the company, the, the date that it was scheduled for, okay, when it, when it gets started, when it was completed, the reference is referencing our requesters. So any requester uh, will show up here. Then, uh, or it, the, the request number, excuse me. Then the category shows what uh, what kind of work order it is. The group further breaks down the category of the work order into breakdown codes and uh, or preventive maintenance codes. Um, and then the classification is for planning and scheduling. So then we also have uh, when it was created what its priority is, the source, the requester, the work group, and the technician. Uh, then we have the services section, which shows us what service has been requested in this case for this work order. Uh, and any, if a requester submits a work order, anything that they type into the request software will show up over here in the work order notes. Uh, then we also have the parts. So we, if we have identified a part that is going to need to be used to, uh, to finish this work order, then it will show up here if we need to add it. It's just as simple as adding it. 
like that, saving it. Go ahead and add quantity one, save it there. Um, and then if I want to attach anything to the work order, I can. Now, if I'm completing this work order, uh, I simply make sure that I have my parts listed. Okay, the services, I'm com the service has been complete uh, or completed. It was completed today. The technician is Eric Waymeyer. Uh, the labor estimate a, typically only comes into play uh, most of the time with, sur with uh, preventive maintenance, but you can uh, estimate the breakdown time where you want to get the labor time is over here in the actual hours. So let's say it took me two hours to complete this task. Um, and then I can assign it a cost center. Okay, the cost center, uh, a real quick overview, is just a further breakdown of your maintenance, uh, maintenance, maintenance budget. So you can break down your maintenance budget inside Express Maintenance. Then if I have any downtime, I select my downtime clock, and I insert a new downtime record, and we'll say it went down at 1 o'clock, 1.04. And then I go over here and I enter my uptime. And then I let it calculate. It gives me 1.0017 hours for downtime. Close that. I've got my downtime logged. It asks me when I started it. I'm going to say I started it on the, or today. When did I finish it? I finished it today. And then I close the work order. So typically, if you're looking at closing work orders, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds once you get good and you're not having to explain it. Um, so the work orders are really easy to complete, very, very simple. And then uh, you can see over here that it's calculated my labor cost, my parts cost, and uh, for a total cost to maintain of uh, $115.61. Now that's as far as I'm going to go. That we have some other things like reports. Uh, we can do. I can demonstrate parts receiving. If you're interested in seeing more than what you've seen here so far, uh, let me know or let us know. Call that number. Email us at support at mass.systems or sales at mass.systems, and someone will reach out to you to schedule that demo. Uh, but we appreciate your interest and look forward to serving you. Thank you.